Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about Gratisil. Anyway, um, let's get this started. Um, not very long from now, if you are wealthy, space can be yours. Space to grow, new technology has seeded a rebirth of the pioneer spirit. A new breed of adventurer has slipped the bonds of gravity and begun a fresh life in orbit. Free from the interference by the, by government, free from, from the the petty concerns of Earth. Who wouldn't want such freedom? Who wouldn't want to escape from society's tangles, from the claws of corporations, from the stifling love of family? Yeah, family love. Isn't that just a pain in the ass? Sometimes. <laughs> But tradition, fear, and revenge carry a murderous weight, a gravity that is not so easy to escape. The death of Gratisil's grandfather, floating high in the uplands, yeah, that's what they're calling orbit in this book. Lame. <clears throat> Above Earth was only the beginning, and now the U.S. government is looking up at the new nation above there really is no nation, really. With our head, above our heads, with jealous eyes. Well, okay now, um, because essentially this whole thing is, um, I should tell you, this whole thing is done in like three parts, which are kind of almost their own novels, so I'm just going to talk about each part individually before I get into a uh, summary. Anyway, um, let's get started with part one. Now, part one revolves around the um, character Clara Jeffrey. And, uh, and um, it starts at about um, 2059 to about, I think, 2090 something and essentially like it's an autobiography detailing the life of oh, well like I said uh, Clara Jeffrey and um <clears throat> anyway um starts out when um and she's the mother of Gra of the title character Gratisil anyway um starts out when um he's like in her her father is like um an engineer kind of guy, uh, I think he's a, or a hobby, um, who is, a, is sort of like an engineer, I think, who designs and retrofits, like, jets to become, um, you know, space planes. I don't really, can't really tell how he, how he does it, uh, um, I just, I guess I just don't get it, I, all I know is that it involves magnets or the Earth's magnetic poles or something, but, um, anyway, um, eventually, um, she's killed by this, or you know, somebody who ha who's, or he's supposedly killed, I should say, and, um, and eventually it's, um, and, um, Clara's wind up, um, uh, with her, you know, mother's family, and, um, and eventually, uh, it's her trying to get back into space, then she hooks up with, like, a friend of her dad, and, um, and, like, everyone's always giving her, like, crap, because, like, um, and she hears, like, uh, people are kind of staring at her because, well, you know, she's, like, of course, they think they're hooking up, hooking up, which they kind of are, but I really don't care about the whole age thing. Especially, also later on, she eventually ditches him anyway for this for a younger guy. But um, then eventually, with this younger guy, she gets pregnant with the Grat with Gratisil, and she has to go back down to Earth, and she raises the kid her by logical father stays in space and eventually dies of like radiation and um she hooks up with like some other guy 
eventually, and who I think becomes like really rich because he is he makes this he's like a scientist who makes a diet drug that apparently like stops the fat from going diet drug for women that like stops fat from going to your stomach and thighs or whatever and like draws it all to their breasts and I thought that was kind of funny and um but then like some economic stuff happens and I don't know and um eventually she gets like a job with the the European Union and um throughout this whole part there's um there's, uh, you know, you no know, talks about the relationship between the United States and the EU and the uplands. I just, I'm never going to think of that as a, that's always going to be a stupid name to me. And, um, uh, <clears throat> eventually it sort of ends in like the, I think there there are like two brief wars between the United between the U.S. and the EU. And the second one ends with the U.S. seizing all of the EU's um, space stuff in uh, in orbit. And um, oh, and uh, one one kind of um, idea that I thought was kind of funny and also kind of a little creative, though is kind of dumb. Also, was um. The one, the one example of the EU space station is where they try and simulate gravity by having fit air jets blowing down onto the people. I thought that was kind of dumb or kind of silly. But it was kind of creative, but still kind of silly. Anyway, I'm going to spoil... I'm going to get a, a big spoiler. Apparently, um... Her uh, father, that was, like I said, supposedly killed, was, turns out, what a twist, wasn't killed at all. <clears throat> and the reason why I'm, like, spoiling this for you is because, you know, if we learned that um, the person that killed him early on in the book was supposedly, like, a serial killer or something, but then you learn at the end, like, no, she's actually, like, a secret agent and... She never killed anybody in her life and stuff. And, um, and this was after she, ba after, um, and we learn this shortly after Clara gets her revenge and <clears throat> by basically throwing her into a, uh, I can't, it's kind of hard to, well, he, um, she goes into check out her, a space station then she takes off, but forgets to like undock the undock the space plane. And so eventually, by the time she does get it undocked, the house that they were in kind of just flies off, and she pretty much is going to be lost in space forever until she dies of suffocation or whatever. Anyway, and then Gratisil comes, and I mean, then Clara comes back and. Is like all right, but then we learn. Oh, she never killed her, and turns out that her father was alive and well. And basically, from what I can tell, she ba he, her father basically just faked her, faked his death, so he could go back and go to the United States and build like better space planes, which actually do show up later on. And we learn that you know her father built them. I guess that's where the whole uh, slipping the or getting away from the strifle or sti stifling love of family part kind of comes into play because of this because you know jackass who just wants to ditch family so he can you know work work with space stuff or whatever and um, one thing that I thought was kind of stupid was how he was talking about um, like throughout the early part he was like Oh come on, we don't need to be going with rockets and shit. We could And then he used like some sort of analogy with like branches or something. I don't know. Anyway, um it's all I just never bothered to give a crap. And um you know, it kind of ends with her talking about how her daughter is like 
hooking up with this Paul Cohn's person and going into space herself. And um, so far, as far as um, space is concerned, this is, you know, most of it doesn't even take place in space, so hardly the epic space opera that it claims to be on the back cover of it. And, um, it's okay, not, but, like, there's plenty of good drama, so, yeah. Alright, now, part two which is, of course, revolving around the, where we finally get to, you know, our title character, Gradisil. Although, unlike the first part, which is told from the perspective of Clara, the titled character of part one, this one actually is um, from the perspective of two other characters. There's some military guy that doesn't it's not very memorable to me anyway, and doesn't really do much. Don't really know why he's even included. I didn't think he was interesting. And then there's Gradisil's husband, a Paul Cones. Cones. Um, um, I'll just like type his name in the description. You know. Anybody can tell me the correct pronunciation, type so in the comment area. Anyway, um, this one um, takes place over the course of like 2090 something to about, um, tw about uh, 21, 2102. Wait. Yeah, yeah, 2,102. Anyway, um, you know, um, where, uh, Gratisil is attempting to, um, you know, like, convince all of the people living in the orbit, I'm not calling it Uplade, that stupid name, anyway, in orbit to, um, you know, go out and to, uh, like, unite and become, like, a single nation. And she actually kind of almost succeeds, even if, like, it's not its not really much of a nation, it's just a bunch of jackasses that want to dodge taxes from their country, and, a, a correction, a bunch of rich jackasses that want to dodge taxes from their country because, you know, they can all afford to go out and buy space planes and build space stations. And, like I said, the only reason is money, and Gratisil kind of takes advantage of that, and, um, <clears throat> eventually there's, like, rising tension between the people in orbit and the United States government, and they go into, like, this brief war, and, um, I'm just going to talk about for a brief bit on, like, how much of a complete bitch that Gratisil is. Although, um, there's one kind of darkly funny bit where, like, they run into, like, while they're trying to recruit people to join their little country, Gratisil, Paul, and two others get, like, kidnapped by this one guy who attempts to rape Gratisil, and except turns out she has like this swirling, scything blade trap inside of her, you know. And um, when he do when he does it, it chops his dick off, and he kind of bleeds out to death. And and he's going like, "Oh my God, my little man, my little man is." been removed on, oh god, the pain. <laughs> I know that's kind of sick, but I couldn't help but get like a bit of a chuckle out of that. But anyway, um, um, the reason why I say that Gratisil is a total bitch is because, you know, um, 
it's actually made clear that she's basically cheating on Paul and um, sort of taking advantage of his good nature to go off into space and stuff. And the thing is, not only did she have like two kids, but even he knows that aren't biologically his, but she works with them daily in their attempt to unite the people in space. And um, then the third time she gets pregnant is when the war, between, so, when the, it's not really much of a war, it's sort of like a conflict. Anyway, um, and this is like the one baby that he actually knows is his. And she basically spends the several months hiding in random houses until the baby dies before finally making her move. And I can't help but constantly feel like so much pity and so, so sorry for this guy who's basically dealing with this lady who's just taking advantage, using him and stuff. And, um... And, um, if, like, if I had to describe Gratisil, then I'd use this clip from the, not, not, the, um, well, like, eventually, like, Paul betrays him, or betrays her after she gets her little victory over America, but, you know, um, before we ta start talking about, uh, part three, I'd like to give, like, a description of you know, Gratisil and her, and is, there's a clip from the Nostalgia Critic when he's describing Bella Swan and her, and like the top 11 dumbasses in distress, which I think perfectly encapsulates or describes, or almost perfectly describes, you know, the character Gratisil and to a lesser extent her mother. And, um,. I'm just going to play that right now. Bella from Twilight. This has to be the most selfish, male-dependent, uncaring, manipulative, self-centered, pretentious, idiotic, whining little bitch bag you will ever see in your entire life. And honestly, that wouldn't be too bad here, but it'd be very, very interesting if it was intentional. And... That is pretty much almost exactly that, except for one little detail, and that is that in this case, it is intentional, okay, and and in my and that actually does make the characters rather interesting. Like, obviously, you're not really supposed to be relating to these characters because they're super rich and can afford space planes and stations and whatever. You know, it's just, you know, letting drama flow, which I'll talk about later later on when, when I do, like, a sort of summary. But, yeah. Anyway, um... <clears throat> anyway, um, like, it's, like, it eventually, like, ends with her being, like, apprehended and whatnot. And so, and, um... You know, eventually we just move on to part three. Now, part three. Now, part three is, um, you know, revolves around the two kids, you know, uh, uh, they're the Gratisil's two, <clears throat> you know, biological children, you know, there's um, the older one, which is named Hope, and the younger brother, the elder brother, two brothers, the older brother Hope, the younger brother Solidarity. Yeah, real creative names, right? <laughs> anyway, um, essentially, uh, like, um, the older one's hope is, uh, has this, um, big business plan or whatever, which I think is kind of, well, really stupid, is, um, this thing called, uh, Moving, Mur Moving Mercury. And, um, his plan is to literally take the planet Mercury and move it into... Earth's orbit, so it's like around, you know, sort of like orbiting around the same plane as like the moon, 
And um, now one, I think that this plan to do so is kind of stupid because I think it was, um, I think it involved like, I think he said something about painting like one half black, the other half white or something. And they would like uh, cause to s somehow, and because um, like one half would like radiate heat away, the other half would, half would like absorb it. Uh, like somehow cause the whole planet to move, which is dumb. And um, not only that, but even if they did succeed, it would be really stupid to move an entire planet into the same orbital area as the planet Earth because, you know, then the planet Mercury would possibly it would screw up the Earth's orbit and cause it to be careening into the sun or you know, flying off into space, and everyone would either burn to death or freeze to death. And, um, but somehow he actually does get somebody who's stupid enough to back him up. You know, when they meet up on the space stage on the in a space hotel, and then they um, he runs into his brother Solidarity, who's who basically drags him into like this revenge plot to kill Paul who's um, the one who, you know, betrayed Gratisil to the American authorities, and he was talking about, like, hey, wait a minute, this this space station is American soil. Is like, oh, shut up. The only reason they're here is because, like, we allow them to be here, which is dumb because even they kind of, even they admit that all that would take would be you know, a few American space planes with missiles to start blowing the crap out of the very space stations and they'd easily take them over all over again. And that the only reason they even left, or the only reason the um, people even won at all, the <clears throat> people in orbit even won at all is because of the Americans eventually just got bored and got sick of them. But, um, anyway, eventually they do that, they capture Paul, and, and they put him into court, or, yeah, and they give him a trial, and, of course, he's found guilty, and they airlock him out of the, out of the, out into space. And, um, now, like, even though this plan was stupid, with the Hope's little moving Mercury plan was like this. This is the shortest out of the out of the three stories. Even the, and I like to say is like even though his even though Hope's plan was stupid, I still couldn't help but feel sorry for the guy. As you know, you know his younger brother was basically screwing his plan to death simply to get revenge on on Paul and. <clears throat> found this plan to be kind of exciting, but overall, yeah, overall, not not exactly. Once again, not very unepic. As a anyway, um, on to the summary overall. Quick. You know, overview of the whole thing is, um, it's a mixed bag, like, um, you know, like, most stuff I wasn't crazy about, but I thought that there was a lot of really good drama, and, um, that was actually the best part, you know, the characters interacting and seeing them get jealous, angry, and that cause them to do various things, you know, um, like I said in part two, the characters, Gratisil and her mother are horrible, horrible people, <laughs> but, you know, that actually kind of makes them interesting is that we're not really supposed to be, like, relating to them or rooting for them, we're just supposed to be, you know, seeing drama flow and stuff, but, and that's really the big saving grace for me is 
far as I can tell, even though I was too crazy about this novel. And, um... You know, like, and there, of course there are a lot of stuff that bugs me, like, well, actually it's not really, you can't, it's, you don't, you're not supposed to sympathize with really anybody, I mean, every one of them is like a super rich guy that can, a super rich person that can, like, afford their own spaceship stations and whatnot, but, you know, like I said, you're not supposed to be sympathizing with anyone, you're supposed to maybe maybe feel sorry for some of them some of the time and hating others and you know like I said just letting just looking at drama and that's really the big saving grace of this whole thing my rating for this would be three out of five you know it was um, I get if, if this if you like drama you're gonna like this if not then I'd probably advise not bothering. Anyway, um, until next time, have a nice day, or see you later, and have a nice day.